everybody, welcome back to another session of The Hoppery. My name is Mark Starr, and this week I'm going to do something a little bit different. Over the last few weeks, I've been focusing on certain styles of beer, um, maybe certain flavorings in beer like we had with the Smoked Beer series and then the Raspberry series, uh, and also the Hop series. But now what I want to do is, you know, occasionally, and I may do this over the next couple weeks, I'm not sure, it just kind of depends on how I feel. Um, but what I'm going to do for you this week is really focus on a brewery. And the brewery that I want to share with you guys this week is a brewery from Belgium. They are from the West Flanders region of Belgium, to be exact. And they are called Dedala Brouwers, uh, which basically just translate to, translates to the Mad Brewer. So, um, you know, they say that the Mad Brewer is just kind of a an ode to the way they brew and to kind of their cockiness in their labels and you know everything that they create at the brewery. But just a little bit of history about them. Um, they've only been around since 1980. So as you will know, you know, a lot of breweries from Belgium, they've been around for years and years and years, sometimes even you know over 100, 200 years. You start talking about some of the Trappist beers, etc. Um, the, these breweries have been around a long time. Uh, this brewery actually uh, started in 1835 uh, by a doctor in the, that area. Um, he died later, sold it off. Um, another you know, brewery was founded there, and I'm not really sure the name. But anyway, it wasn't until 1980 uh, that the brothers of Dedala actually opened up this brewery and started brewing beer themselves. Um, you know, they really wanted to save the brewery. I think their quote was, if we don't save it, then nobody will. So anyway, I've had one or two of their beers. I'm going to share two of them uh, with you this week that I've had, and then one that I have not had yet, which will be on Friday, their extra stout. But I have had this one, uh, which is called their uh, Dolatev, and basically that just means mad bitch. Um, you'll notice on the label here in the United States that, and I'm, you'll have to excuse me, I'm trying not to agitate this bottle too much. I did notice when I got home from the liquor store that quite a bit of the sediment uh, was floating around, so I've really kind of given this some time to um, you know, settle back down. But anyway, you can see up here on the top corner here, uh, maybe you can, I hope you can, uh, it basically says triple, which is what this style is. It's a strong blonde um, you know, triple, um, but because of U.S. laws and labeling laws, they didn't want them to put mad bitch. Sorry, guys. Um, pretty pathetic here, I know. Uh, but anyway, this is a triple. It's a Belgian triple, and, uh, you know, I, from what I can remember, I remember this just being a very full-flavored, very nice triple. So, um, you know, Dedala, really good brewery. Uh, probably quickly approaching my top 10 list to be honest with you so again that's why I wanted to share them with you um, this week so without further ado let's go ahead and start pouring this one and I'm gonna start to pour this one pretty slow because I remember Belgian beers having a very um, you know high probability of just getting an insane amount of head and I can see that I'm right on there and also I want to pour it slow because I don't want to uh, get all of that sediment, um, you know, kind of into the glass, at least not yet. So looking at it from a color perspective, I'll tell you what, right off the bat, before I even notice the color, I can tell you the effervescence on this thing is insane. Uh, there's at least 10 million bubbles in there just trying to scream their way up to the top. So. Um, that tells me that this is probably going to have a really nice, a really nice refreshing mouthfeel. Um, but the color is very standard of a triple, uh, kind of along the lines of a saison as well. Though a saison probably would be uh, a touch more yellow. Um, this one's, uh, you know, it's it's golden colored, but closer to the orange side of golden. So, really a good looking beer, and I can already smell. Uh, those Belgian yeast popping up out of that glass and you can even see I'm holding it above my nose So it really is kind of starting to uh, fill up the room with those aromas um, As you'll notice too, ton of head um, You know, I pour about the normal amount in here every time and, and again, I just pour enough to uh, Get me through a review so that I can smell it open it up um, And I've already got about three fingers of head there. So 
I, I would say right off the bat, this is a very pleasing looking beer, and that's always a good sign. I know a lot of people uh, taste with their eyes, so that's what I'm doing right now. But now I'm going to smell with my nose, so let's do it. Very malty, uh, very malty, very yeasty. Um, this really smells like uh, bread dough before you've actually put it in the oven. So, you know, it's kind of got that um, malty, um, yeasty sort of quality. Not getting a whole lot of like, you know, um, maybe just a little bit of spice. I, I, I'm not getting overwhelmed by spice um, or any of those other characteristics like you might sometimes get out of a beer like this. Yeah, definitely getting a lot of the yeast, though. And I would say um, this is obviously Belgian, but it's Belgian through and through. Uh, I would almost even go so far as to say that it reminds me um, of the smell of a Hefeweizen as well. So very similar. Um, you know, we're really talking a light beer with, you know, a full-flavored light beer, I should say. And I'm not even going to say light. I'm just going to say light in color. This is obviously not... Um, you know, like a like a, a lager or a pilsner or you know anything like that. So, well, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and drink it because uh, I think it looks pretty good and I'm ready. Very very nice. I mean, you know, when you talk about the flavor of a triple, and I obviously think back to things like uh, the triple caramelly. To me, that's kind of uh, you know, a starting point for me. It was one of the first triples that I really loved. This reminds me a lot of that beer, though I will tell you that the mouthfeel is a little bit bigger. Um, there is a slight higher alcohol burn on this one. Uh, this beer right here is 10% alcohol, which is about in the middle for the style. They generally range from about 8 to 12%. So this is sitting right in the middle. Beautiful, beautiful beer. I mean, this really does remind me a lot of the Triple Carmelite. So just to kind of give you a frame of reference uh, of where this beer is coming from, I think if you like the Carmelite, um, this one will be a, a really good progression for you. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, man, we're starting off uh, really nice this week. As you can see as well, I'm getting some very, very strong... I'll hold that up there. Very, very strong lacing on the glass. Well, guys, um, I've preached enough. I hope you are enjoying this week's worth of sessions. Uh, I think Dadala is a great brewery, and I've got two more that I'm going to share with you. I'm going to share their Ur beer with you on Wednesday, and then again, the extra stout on Friday. So keep coming back, and we'll see you next time. All right, guys. Cheers.